This is your USMNT Abroad weekly update from May 4th to May 10th of 2021. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, Tactical Manager, and this is our weekly series where we update you every Monday on how USMNT players did abroad in the previous week or weekend. So if you like this type of content, make sure to hit the like button because this series is coming to an end in the month of May. Not an end, a pause. We'll be back in August after summer break. We're obviously going to continue the content, the USMNT, but this specific series will come to a pause. So if you want us to continue it in August, make sure to hit the like button so we know that you guys truly enjoyed the series. Also, don't forget to comment the player of the week. Wait, 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 wait. Don't comment the player of the week. The player of the week is obviously Matt Miazga. He officially has more goals than Diego Lion is this season, so it has to be Matt Miazga. But jokes aside, comment your player of the week down below. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss our content. And well, let's hear from our sponsor. And thank you OneFootball for sponsoring this video and Tactical Manager TV on the month of May. Thank you very much. OneFootball is the perfect soccer app. I love it very much. It helps me a lot with this series to keep me updated on all the USMNT players playing abroad, their stats and their performances, along with me watching them as well. But honestly, this app is a savior. So guys, I'm putting the link down in the description. Make sure to download the free app on your Android and iPhone. It's free and you would be really helping us from Tactical Manager TV, independent creators. So once again, thank you OneFootball for sponsoring this video and hey, hey 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 it's called soccer all right now that we finished the promotion let's roll the episode Okay, so now that we're gonna start the episode, let's start with the possible transfer, transfer rumors, and transfer updates. And the first one I wanna talk about is Owen Otasawi. There are some offers for Owen coming from Nice, Anderlecht, Wolfsburg, according to The Telegraph. Yes, it's a media outlet in Europe. Again, any move for Otasawi that gets him playing time, I will support it. Okay, now Conrad De La Fuente has apparently a loan offer from Getafe, according to Bein Sports. As the days go by, it seems more and more likely that he will leave Barcelona this offseason. And now a quick update on Justin Che. He's on a loan at Bayern Munich from FC Dallas, and apparently Bayern Munich is interested in signing him for the long term, a permanent deal. So that will probably happen. Justin Che will likely be a Bayern Munich player for next season. Will he stay with the main squad or will he continue with the second team? Will he get a loan? Only time will tell, but he's likely going to be a Bayern player for the future. All right, we're moving forward. Now we're going to go to the performance updates, and I'm going to start with Christian Pulisic. On Wednesday, Pulisic started off the bench for Chelsea at their 2-0 win over Real Madrid, which led them to the Champions League final. Pulisic came into the game at the 67th minute and the defense was just no match for him and at the 85th minute he assisted Mason Mount for the second goal that guaranteed Chelsea a spot in the final. Now many speculate on why Christian Pulisic was at the bench. Some said it was to get him against tired legs, others said it was a yellow card, and it was none of that. Thomas Tuchel came out, and I'm going to quote him, his words, not mine, to the reason why Pulisic wasn't there and it was honestly just a coaching preference, a tactical and technical strategy. Christian got a bad message for him today, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure we need more than 11 players to sneak through. It's good to have Christian up from the bench. Kai gave a little bit of height also against set pieces and maybe in fast attacks he can keep the ball better. Now on Saturday, Pulisic started for Chelsea at what many call the preview to the Champions League final where Chelsea will also face Manchester City. And while he played a full 90 minutes and Chelsea defeated Manchester City with a late goal at a 2-1 victory. Pulisic did okay, had a decent game and he played a big role on the setup of Chelsea's first goal in the match. Okay now Weston McKinney. On Sunday Weston McKinney started and played a full 90 minutes for Juve at their 3-0 loss to AC Milan. Man what a bad season from Juventus. McKinney most certainly did not have a good game, but then again, he's much better playing as an eight rather than out wide. Plus the hip injury might still be bugging him. Plus Pirlo is just bugging everyone in Juventus at this point. With his outdated tactics, it almost seems like he's trying to implement the AC Milan 2000s tactics now in 2021 and it's just not working that 4-4-2 that he's currently playing. Juventus currently sits in fifth place in Serie A and they do have a decent risk of missing the Champions League for next season. Okay, now Gio Reyna from Borussia Dortmund. On Saturday, Gio Reyna started and played 82 minutes for Dortmund at their 3-2 victory over RB Leipzig for the Bundesliga. Now, in my personal opinion, Reyna did not have the best game again. He was playing out wide in the right side of the field, which is not where he's at his best, but he did not have the best game overall in general. And well, Eintracht Frankfurt tied their match, so now Borussia Dortmund is on the top four and currently qualifying to the Champions League, which is just awesome because now we have Dortmund, Wolfsburg, and Leipzig qualifying to the Champions League, which means Tyler Adams, John Brooks, and Reyna are all, as of right now, qualifying to the Champions League next season. Okay. Now, Serginho Des. On Saturday, Des started and played 75 minutes for Barcelona at their 0-0 draw with Atletico Madrid. 
Well, Real Madrid also tied Sevilla, and right now the title of the Liga seems like a hot potato at this point. Seems like all three top clubs, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, and Barcelona, just don't want to win it. With three matches to go, Atletico Madrid has 77 points, Real Madrid has 75, and Barcelona has 75 as well, just losing to Real Madrid on the goal score. Well, at least it looks somewhat promising, and Sergio Des could win La Liga, but it's so open right now. We can go to Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, or Real Madrid. We don't know, but there's a decent chance that Sergio Des could lift another trophy for Barcelona in his very first season there. Okay, now Tyler Adams, he was not available for RB Leipzig's game on Saturday versus Dortmund due to a back injury, but it seems like it's just a minor injury, and they're hopeful that he will be available for the German Cup final. So he should be back very soon, and he probably will still play this season. It doesn't seem like anything serious. Okay, now by position, let's start the goalkeepers, and there's not that many updates on the goalkeepers. They didn't really play any significant minutes or anything, but just the update I want to give you guys, Zach Steffen's Manchester City qualified to the Champions League final, so Zach Steffen could win the Champions League even though he's not gonna probably not gonna play in the final as he's not their main starter but we have an American guaranteed trophy in the Champions League finals we have Zach Steffen on one side and Christian Pulisic on the other side but now with that said please hit that like button right now as it really helps other USMNT fans find us Okay, and let's start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. On Saturday, John Brooks started and played a full 90 minutes for Wolfsburg at their 3-0 win over Union Berlin. He got a clean sheet, another solid performance, and his team is very close to qualifying for the Champions League. Very solid season from John Brooks and several solid games throughout the season. Now, Chris Richards was not available for Hoffenheim this weekend as he still recovers from that little tweak on his hamstring. It doesn't seem too serious. He should be back anytime soon, but he's not ready to come back yet. There's two games left in the Bundesliga, so I'm not sure if he'll still play for Hoffenheim this season. Only time will tell, but it shouldn't be a problem for Nations League, I'm hoping. All right, Eric Palmer-Brown. On Saturday, Eric Palmer-Brown started, played a full 90 minutes and got a yellow card for Austria Wien's 2-0 loss to Altash. Okay, now the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Miazga. On Saturday, Miazga started, played a full 90 minutes, and scored a game tying goal for Anderlecht at the 96th minute at their 2 2 draw with Antwerp. Now, the center back now has one goal this season, while Mexican Messi Diego Lanes has none for Real Betis. Man, I should really start an 0 3 abroad series. I should really do that. It'll be a lot easier than this. There's not that much to report on. Okay, back to USMNT abroad. Let's go to Mark McKenzie. On Friday, Mark McKenzie started off the bench for Genk at their 3-0 win over Club Bruges. McKenzie came into the game at the 89th minute. The minutes for Mark McKenzie are just not looking good at all. So that's a W for L3 fans right there. Arteaga has been fantastic for Genk. So congratulations to L3 right there. You see, I give credit where credit is due. Okay, now Cameron Carter Vickers from Burnmouth. On Saturday, Cameron Carter Vickers started and played a full 90 minutes for Burnmouth at their 2-0 loss to Stoke City. They will face Brentford for the semifinals of the championship at the first leg, May 17th. Okay, now we're gonna go to the fullbacks. All right guys, quick update from work here. I did not watch Anthony Robinson play, but Fulham did lose to Burnley. He did play a full 90 minutes as a left back. Apparently they went for four defender formation, but I can't comment on his performance. They lost and Fulham is officially relegated. How does that affect Anthony Robinson? I don't know if he will stay and play in the championship or maybe he'll get a transfer this summer. We'll know very soon. We'll follow through with that and update you guys, keep you updated with everything. But that's a report on Anthony Robinson. He's relegated to the championship. There's three rounds left and they're already relegated. He played a full 90 minutes today on Monday. Okay, so Reggie Cannon now. On Friday, Reggie Cannon started for Boavista and played 81 minutes at their 1-1 draw with Tondela. He was subbed off a little after Boavista was behind on the scoreboard, and then later on they tied the game without Reggie Cannon. Now, Matthew Olasunde. On Saturday, Olasunde stayed a full 90 minutes at the bench for Rotterdam at their final game of the season, and well, they got relegated from the championship. I don't know if Olasunde will stay, but at this point, it seems very likely that he will be playing at the English 3rd Division. Okay, now let's talk about Brian Reynolds, and it was kind of a good weekend and bad at the same time for but let's just talk about Brian Reynolds on Sunday Brian Reynolds started and played 59 minutes for Roma at their 5-0 win over Crotone so a start in a 5-0 win that's a positive he also played as a left back that's another positive it shows versatility that was pretty good as well he can play as a right back left back so and I was only able to watch the second half for that game so I watched Brian Reynolds play for roughly 15 minutes and he didn't look too good he didn't seem very comfortable in the position his touch wasn't the best also I was not able to follow through in the first half so I'm not gonna comment on that so I think his and he was subbed off early so his performance maybe wasn't that good it's been like that all season for him at Roma. He's still adjusting. I'm still very hopeful of him. He's still adjusting for a new club, new system, everything. I'm just a little bit worried and concerned about the hiring of Jose Mourinho to be his new manager. That's all. But let's move forward to Ryan Reynolds. 
he had an okay weekend in my personal opinion when you put everything into perspective. All right, now DeAndre Yedlin. On Saturday, DeAndre Yedlin was back. He started for Galatasaray after a 3-1 victory over Besiktas and played a full 90 minutes as well. And this was a very big win. The league has two rounds left and they are now three points away from the current leaders, Besiktas. So there's a chance they could win the Turkish league. It's not likely that they will win it with two matches left and three points behind, but there's a possibility with this win, they made it possible and DeAndre Adlin was back. He played as a right back the full 90 minutes. So he's fully healthy. All right, now the midfielders and let's start with Yunus Musa from Valencia. On Sunday, Valencia defeated Valladolid 3-0. And a fun fact is Valladolid is owned by Ronaldo Phenomenon. Now, Yunus Musa stayed at the bench a full 90 minutes. It seems like every time Valencia goes with a three defender formation with wingbacks, Musa gets no minutes. So my issue with this is that they only see Yunus Musa as a wide midfielder or maybe even a winger. So when they don't use that, they never place him as an eight. He just doesn't play at all. That is a problem for me as I do see him better as an eight or even as an attacking midfielder. Even a six, honestly, he could even play there. But it doesn't seem like Valencia sees him that way. And that is one of the issues I have with him playing for Valencia. But that can change next season. We'll see. All right, now Owen Atasawi was not available for the Wolves this week because he picked up a knock. He had a little injury, so he wasn't available to play. We should see a couple minutes from him towards the end of the season now. It seems like their coach is willing to play him a little more, but we'll hold our expectations on that. Okay, now Brendan Arison. And what a player, what a season he's had for RB Salzburg, even though he just arrived mid-season. On Sunday, Brendan Arison put up another big time performance for Salzburg at their 3-1 win over Sturm Graz. Brendan played 84 minutes, scored two goals in this match and putting up a man of the match performance. The first goal was in the box with a perfect clinical finish by Brendan. He may be our nine. We found our nine. Okay, I'm joking, he's not our nine, but that was a finish of a nine that we need. The second goal was a shot outside of the box from Brendan. Brendan is right in between that fine line that he's too good for the Austrian league, but still not ready for a top five league in my opinion. He's right in between. Give it one season, he's ready to go. And I'd like you guys to tell me, if you could choose a league for Brendan Harrison to go, which league would you choose and why? Just comment down below and while you're at it, hit that like button. It really helps. Maybe if you guys hit enough like one, maybe we hit 500 in this video. Maybe I'll bring Pippa Parker back next episode. All right, now Taylor Booth. On Saturday, Booth started off the bench for Poulton at their 2-0 loss to Admita. Booth came into the game at the 43rd minute in the first half. Poulton currently sits in last place at the relegation group of the Austrian League. All right, now Julian Green from Firth. On Saturday, Green started and played 67 minutes for Firth at their 2-2 draw with Karlsruhe. There are two more rounds left in the second Bundesliga and it seems very likely that Firth will finish in third place and have a playoff match to determine if they will go to the Bundesliga or not. Okay, now Luca De La Torre. On Saturday, Luca De La Torre started and played 84 minutes for Heracles at their 1-1 draw of 20 for the Dutch league. Heracles did allow the draw one minute after De La Torre left the field. Just saying, he left the field and they allowed a goal. They ended up drawing 1-1 instead of getting the 1-0 victory. Just saying. Okay, now Dwayne Holm. On Saturday, Dwayne Holm starred and played 60 minutes for Huddersfield at their 2-2 draw with Reading. They finished in 20th place in the season and it is now over. Well, at least they didn't get relegated. Okay, we're moving forward in the video and now we've reached the forwards, the wingers, the center forwards, the second strikers. And let's start with Timothy Weah. On Friday, Tim Weah started off the bench for Lille at their 3-0 win over Lens for the French League. Weah came into the game at the 67th minute when the match was already 3-0. So Lille currently leads the league three points ahead of PSG with two rounds left. That means Lille only needs one draw and one victory to get the French league title, which would be amazing for Timwaya and this league, this very young league team. So we'll see, two more rounds left. It's gonna be a very exciting end. Okay, now Matthew Hoppy from Schalke. On Saturday, Schalke lost 4-2 to Hoffenheim. Hoppy started off the bench and came into the game at the 86th minute when the game was already 4-2. Why do they put him in with four minutes left in a game that's lost and a team that's already relegated? I don't know. It's a freaking mess of a team. At this point, just let just let Matthew Hoppy play a full 90 minutes. He's young. Let him develop. Let him play up a little more. I'm done with this team. They're going to Bundesliga 2. I'm going forward. Let's keep going to the video. And we're going to talk about Alex Maiten now. On Saturday, Alex Maiten started off the bench for Nottingham Forest at their 2-1 loss to Preston. He came into the game at the 74th minute. Now their season is over and Maiten played 23 matches in the championship, scored three goals and got one assist. Okay, let's move forward to Linden Goosh. On Sunday, Goosh started and played a full 90 minutes for Sunderland at their 1-0 win over Northampton Town. Sunderland finished fourth in the English third division and will now play the playoffs to try to get a spot in the championship next season. They play the first leg of the semi-final playoffs May 19th versus Lincoln City. Daryl DK 
from Barnsley or Orlando City. On Saturday, DK started off the bench for Barnsley, likely being rested at their 2-2 draw with Norwich. DK came to the game at the 55th minute. Okay, so Barnsley plays May 17th versus Swansea for the first leg of the championship semifinals to get a spot on the, the Premier League. Let's keep a close eye on that. There's two legs for that. That's the first match versus Swansea. It's a tough opponent, but I think Barnsley has a pretty good shot on making it to the Premier League. It is very possible. We also did a whole video analyzing whether Daryl DK is ready for the Premier League or not. So don't miss out on that video on the channel. It's one of our most recent videos we uploaded this Sunday. So don't miss out on that video. Go check it out right now. No, 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 actually, not right now. Finish this video first, then go there and hit that like button as well. Okay, now Josh Sargent from Werder Bremen. On Saturday, Josh Sargent started and played 84 minutes for Werder Bremen at their 0-0 draw with Bayern Leverkusen. They are tied in points with the bottom three. Relegation is very possible with two rounds left in the Bundesliga. It's very likely they could finish third to last, which means they could face Firth from Julian Green. So we could see a battle between Josh Sargent and Julian Green to see who will be in the Bundesliga next season. So that is very possible to happen. It's not confirmed, but the odds are starting to look like that could happen. All right, now Siabachu. On Saturday, Siabachu start off the bench for Young Boys at their 2-0 win over Basel in the Swiss League. He came to the game at the 76th minute. Okay, now let's talk about Haji Wright. On Sunday, Haji Wright start off the bench for Southern Jeski at their 4-2 loss to Vij for the Danish league. He came into the game at the 84th minute. Last but not least, Emmanuel Sabi. On Friday, Sabi started off the bench for Odense at their 1-0 win over Aalborg. He came into the game at the 76th minute. All right, guys, these are the updates for the previous weekend weekend about the USMNT abroads. I hope you guys truly enjoyed it. Before I go, I'm going to list a couple names of players that we normally cover, but we didn't cover this week because they didn't have any meaningful minutes or didn't play at all or just weren't important at all, at least for this week. With all that said, hopefully you guys hit the like button by now. It truly helps the channel. This series is coming to a pause later this month, and then we're going to resume it in August. So keep that in mind. Please hit the like button so we know you truly enjoy this type of content and you want us to continue in August. Now let's go through the quick list of players we normally cover. Ethan Horvath, Zach Steffen, CJ Dos Santos, Chiture Odunze, Kick Piri, Sebastian Salcedo, Johnny Cardoso, Fularin Balagan, Richie Ledesma, Charlie Kilman, Tyler Boyd, Christian Kappis, Shaquo Moore, Henry Wingo, Chris Durkin, Joe Scali, and Nicolas Gioacchini. All right, guys, I want to thank you all very much for watching. We have great content coming up. We have a great Caden Clark video, a bunch of good stuff coming up to the channel, and the USMNT does play at the end of the month. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and have a great day.